Hi everybody, it's Tara Boothby and Stephanie Parent Chandler from Sojourn Psychologist. We are both registered psychologists in Alberta and we've been doing this vlog thing. Um, so we're talking about co-regulation and as moms of young children, but actually moms who have been working with children and teens who have um, significant partners in our lives that we are in quarantine lockdown with, we were shooting off some ideas about how we're co-regulating with our kids and some of the things we see working with older children and teens as well as partners. So yeah. we thought we'd just fire back and forth. So one of the things that um, both Stephanie and I see is like the importance of co-regulation at bedtime. Now, what I find is, so with my son, uh, he wants to sit in my lap face to face and he wants to have a conversation or show me a toy but recently what he really wants to do is he wants to run downstairs and find a toy and bring it back up so then he's already coming in in a more soothed space mm. i can do a mini time in and put him down my daughter right now she wants back tickles she wants me to come and talk to her tell her about her day and that is just helping to co-regulate her helping to slow her down to soothe her so that she can go to sleep for me what about you stephanie yeah absolutely you know i've been noticing so my kids have always been really good sleepers and like my husband and i have been like share like kind of closeted like really good sleeper family people because we know not every parent gets that, but we've been really lucky with that. But my son, this has just been a really weird time, right? So like my son, I've been noticing his sleep has been off and he's just wanted us to be in the room with him a little bit more. So what he really likes is he likes for me and him just to talk about the day, talk about what was like the, the best part of his day. And he really wants me to like give him like a little bit of leg massaging. So he wants me to like massage his legs a little bit. And then um, we, <laughs> we have this really funny little game that we do, which is we, <laughs> this is kind of silly. We kind of like put our mouths like closed like this and we talk and we see if we can understand what the other person is saying. So we just do a couple little rounds of just really connecting in that. Um, my daughter, she's very, she loves hearing songs. She loves hearing music. And so she'll lay in her bed and she just wants me to sing to her. And so I might just be on her floor singing to her and that's just what she needs. And last night she needed me to hold her hand. So I was like, okay, that's what we're going to do. Right. And um, so I think for, for my, I think it's just giving them that chance to really voice what they need and then just following that in that way. Exactly. I think that's so good. You know, like the power of touch and the power of conversation are very key to soothing a hot brain and co-regulation. Um, something that I noticed that this is like where I first learned this was really working with teens and, and trying to help parents parent teenagers, but it works extremely well just in marriage, especially in quarantine where sometimes we're a little sick of our person, is the idea of just shoulder to shoulder co-regulation. Yeah. So sometimes having coffee side by side is just something that we can do to ease into each other's energy. And there isn't anytime we're touching, there's some oxytocin action going on, which is always good to remind our brains that this is my person to co-regulate off of. Uh, so okay. that's marital uh, tip. And also with teens or any kids, really. What do we what oh. do? We do? Well, what we know, we know that nervous systems don't want to be dysregulated, right? Like we, it does not feel good internally to be up and dysregulated. And so when we have somebody sitting near us and whether it be that shoulder to shoulder contact or even like just leg kind of contact in that way, right? So whether it be feet or leg, you think of like a teenager who puts their feet on top of their, ki of their mother or father's or their caregiver's lap, right? That's a sign of just having that, that, that contact comfort I guess if you think about it in that way um, but and once when when a nervous system sees another nervous system that is calm and regulated it begins to naturally match that that's just this like scientific cool thing that happens right so I think having that touch and, and especially with teens right feet in the lap or head in the lap or like just kind of head on a shoulder that's the kind of stuff we use right we don't need to have anything more maybe that's what what they need in that moment yeah, another real simple thing with any people is eye contact. You know, like when we're in conflict, shame shows up and naturally our eyes want to go down. 
So there's this vulnerable thing about eye contact, but that is a way to reinforce co-regulation. Another really simple thing, and I actually got this from the strength-based strength school of thought, is just honoring hellos and goodbyes. So saying goodbye to our person, our partner, before we leave, saying hello when we come back. And again, with our children or our teenagers, even if the teenagers are acting disinterested, honoring that hello and goodbye is really, really important. I think that routine is important, mm -hmm. right? Because I think especially right now when things are so out of routine and we're creating these new normal routines, I think, um, I think maintaining some sort of routine is a good thing. And I think hellos and goodbyes are part of that, right? That part of that, that ability to, you know, just say, this is what it feels like when, even as, a, as an adolescent, right? This is what it feels like when my parent leaves, right? This is what's going to happen. I know when they're coming back. Those are those sorts of things that, that don't age out, right? That, that it's important for, for us to let, the, let them know that regardless of what age they are. Yeah, I, I agree with that. They don't age out. That's a brilliant way of just noticing it. And then there's this other thing of like, you know, with the little ones, so my guys are still little, that heart to heart hugging, mm -hmm. you know, trying to find that space where we can have, you know, the body language more square on. So that's easier with our little kids and hopefully with our romantic partner. Yeah. Um, and it can be a little trickier with our teenagers in different things, but it's finding a way to just have our body language as squarely attuned to the other person, hopefully heart to heart. Yeah. Because the heart-to-heart -heart hug is just like the most profound co-regulation experience. Right, yeah. The warm fuzzy that just gets that when they, when this, yeah, I have young kids as well. So when the arms are wrapped around their neck as tight as they can go and just right there, it's, it's a really nice feeling. And it's interesting how even if you're doing the regulating, how it also soothes your system right it's quite an interesting interesting dynamic that happens there it really is you know because the the idea of co-regulation is actually like for us to give to our children but we call it co-regulation because that's how we're wired that our nervous systems are playing into each other and noticing into each other and that's where that like dynamic of misinterpretation or misinformation happens between parent and child or romantic partners so Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. These are some really good little pieces. Anything, any other little ones that, that you're thinking of for you, Stephanie? You know, the only other thing that comes to mind is that, you know, when kids struggle, which I mean, being real, my, like my, my son is struggling, you know, and, and I, I know for myself that I can get to a place where I'm not regulated. And so I can get to a more like behavior, like go to your room, blah, 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 kind of thing. But I've been working very hard on saying, okay, we're going to, we are going to go into your room and we are going to sit and I'm going to see what is going on, bud, right? Because this isn't like you to be struggling like this, right? So there's this idea of time in time, right? Of really connecting and seeing what is happening here and what is going on and connecting to understand what is this behavior trying to tell me, right? Because typically it's a need or a feeling trying to be expressed and kids don't have any other way of doing that. Yeah, just again, this thing that we're all being challenged on right now, but holding space to listen and letting these little voices try to find their voice with mom or dad or whomever is, is parenting them in that moment. Because our, our little ones and us big ones are just longing to be seen, heard, known, and to matter. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so this is fun. I mean, I always love talking about attachment and brain and all this stuff with people in particularly Stephanie. <laughs> Absolutely. It's always a good time. <laughs> we always do have a good time. So if you guys want to see more of what Stephanie's saying, she's got her bio on her website, you know, all of her good information or just write something down below. I'll make sure you can find whatever you want to find. Well, within reason. <laughs> within some reason. Yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie. All right, guys. Bye. Absolutely. Bye.